Okay, so we've been slowly but surely getting everything ready, prepared for this unification process or transcendence or um, ascension. You know, there's a lot of words for it and, and you know, most of them come from this old, ancient, esoteric, you know, spiritualized, new age way of um, thinking and, and um, lexicon, I guess. But really, it's just like, it's emerging into a greater consciousness, okay? And what does that mean? Well, one of my favorite um, anime movies, which is now being called a masterpiece, which was made in 1995, 1990, something like that. I think it was 95, actually. Um, and it was one of the main influences of the film The Matrix, which was called The Ghost in the Shell, or Ghost in the Shell. And uh, we see in that story of the main character, you know, trying to understand who they are and how they fit into the world, and which is pretty common sort of theme. And then merging with this, um, this intelligence and becoming something greater than both of them. And, you know, it's, it's moving from this consciousness of being a personality inside a body to merging with everything uh, and, uh, that's in the environment and realizing that your personality is transcendental, it's transitional and that uh, when we start to transcend space-time in a linear format on a third dimensional reality and we realize that this body is just a and the mind is just a configuration of you know memories thoughts emotions experiences um, and a product mostly for the most part of the environment then we can start to move out of this fixed existence into something that's a lot more flexible and malleable and uh, omnipresent. And so I like to use, uh, you know, technology examples and computer, computer examples because for me, <clears throat> the cyberspace is probably the most um, closely most closely resembles the um, this energetic spiritual space of time space or no time and no space and so we move from this consciousness that's restricted and constricted only inside a body into a consciousness that can move anywhere through the system and through any time okay so just like a, an artificial intelligence which isn't bound by a body can move in and out of any system and any device connected to that system. Um, we start to get our awareness into a place where we can start to project and move our consciousness around into different parts of life, into different parts of the virtual reality experience that we call life and so I know this is sort of a big concept but you know it's one thing to move from okay I'm just a body and a mind to now I'm part of everything and I'm connected and all that people are starting to really accept that but it's still within a framework that you're still inside this system that is still it's you but it's you don't really know how it's you right and so I like to also use the, the lucid dream uh, metaphor where, you know, you're the dreamer dreaming the dream and everything in the dream is you. Just like when you have a dream at night and, it, you know, you're so convinced that that's your reality and then you wake up and it's like, 
takes a moment for you to orientate yourself and you go, oh, that's right. I'm this personality living in this place. This is my bedroom and this is my life and these are my memories. And, and slowly you start to fall back into, you know, this script of who you are. And so what we begin to do now when we raise our awareness and our consciousness is we move into this place where we realize that that's just, you know, a script, that's just coding, and that uh, that coding can be changed. Now, when we do this, you know, it all sounds wonderful because now you can become anything, right? But I've got to warn you guys that there's this moment where you start to see it all as being pretty meaningless and pointless. And it's like, well, it's just a big game, right? And there's no real point to the game. Um, and it doesn't matter whether I'm this person or that person and I, or I live here or I live there or my, you know, my goals are this or that. You know, you achieve one goal and then there's another goal to achieve and it's just endless and it just goes on and on and on. And there's no real you know, end to it. So what's the point? And, you know, this, this deconstruction process of your personality and everything that you value, um, can be quite a daunting one. And, uh, you know, at first people get into the spiritual practices and meditations as a means to escape the life that they don't want to live and to create a new one but then you get to this point where it's like well I'm so good at creating life my life now in all these different ways that it doesn't really matter which life I'm creating because it's all you know I'm still here and I'm still me but a different version of me and uh, if I you know I keep achieving all these things which is great <coughs> but at the end of the day it's just another achievement like so what you know and uh, you know this is where I say we need to get into playing the game for the game's sake all right and it's not about winning the game or finishing the game but it's just about playing because that's all there is to do right and so um, then it's just this sort of you know thing about exploring and you take your time because there's no rush anymore because you know what's the point of rushing when you're only going to arrive when you arrive and all that sort of stuff and so you know we activate all these different skills and abilities and we start to increase our skills and abilities and um, and we change our mind so many times and our personality shifts so many times that it's like all right, well, now you feel a little bit loose in this whole thing. And it's like, where do I rest in all of this? And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because it's like you need, you don't want everything, you don't want all your problems to disappear completely because then there's nothing to do and nothing to, um, no, there's no drive to participate in it right and so you don't want to just sit there you know meditating your life away because and going off into the ether and just living there I mean that's nice and everything but you've got to ground this somehow because what's the point of having a body in this physical reality if you're not going to you know ground these new abilities these new techniques these new feelings these emotions these experiences you know, if you, just because you can, you know, go off into any part of the universe mentally, um, you know, project your consciousness there and have experiences there, there has to be, you know, you want, you want some kind of point to it. So you want those experiences and those emotions to start to um, train the body into new states of being. So when you are in your body, you know, you're having a good time in this third dimensional space too and so this is where I, I think balance is important because you've got to really bring balance into your life in terms of yes 
I can project my consciousness and I can have do all these things on the astral plane or the dream plane or the mental plane or whatever all these different planes and I can have an influence and effect and all that sort of stuff but when I come back to my body you know I've still got all these problems and these frustrations and da 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 da, da. and so you know being able to ground all this into the body and be able to enjoy the experience genuinely being in your body not just you know walk around and do Instagram and like look at my life I'm so spiritual and I do yoga and I'm a vegan and you know I drink my green juice every day and uh, you know I save the environment by recycling plastic and all good things but um, you know is is that really are you adding value to your life by doing those things and are you contributing to you know this dreamscape or are you just doing it because you think it's this the right thing to do or you, it makes you a better person or you you're a, you makes you spiritual or you know you think people are going to like you more because of that and so <clears throat> It's really important when you have these experiences is to get and, and to use them to reflect deeply inside yourself and to say, you know, is this, is this helping me um, clean up my internal world? Is this helping me refine myself? Is this actually moving me to a place where I'm beyond my past self? Or is this just reinforcing my personality which is completely known and you know it's just boring because even though I might be able to fool everyone in externally and and I might be able to get <clears throat> you know people's attention on me because of that um, is this actually without all that without all that external validation recognition is this really improving myself and 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 in a way where um, I'm feeling like I'm evolving all right and so if we can do that and we can have that focus then we start to get into that unknown space and we start to get into that flow with life and we start to tune into that higher mind and it's not like <clears throat> it's not like we really um, so like we really get anywhere further but we become more aware of what that mind which is part of us is actually doing and we can tune into that and, and um, that opens up the world and the perceptions of the world in such vast ways that um, you know it can be exciting but can be very very confronting at the same time too and so it's not about you know meditating every day and doing all these rituals r religiously um, you know in, in the books from uh, Carlos Castaneda when they were you know um, him and uh, the character and and uh, Carlos was um, were trying out all these you know experimenting and and having all these different adventures through these uh, plant-based substances I remember one time he comes out of this trip and he says you know how often should I do this and he says as often as you can and you know most people might think oh well you know maybe I've got to do it once a day or twice a day or you know I've got to change my whole life just so I can have these experiences and it's like no that's not it at all you know you, when he says you do it as often as you can it's like you go you have this experience you stretch yourself into that unknown space you have the ex the experience the new awareness you get provoked and confronted it stirs up and disturbs who you are you come back out of it you take your time adjusting and reprogramming yourself and updating yourself and you gain the new uh, perspective and the new abilities and the new codes and all that sort of stuff and then you ground it into your life and wait and and it becomes part of you and then 
when that's stabilized and that's normalized and you've had the experience and you've come to the end of that cycle of that level in the game, then you do it again and you progress again. And only then. Otherwise, if you just keep going at it and pushing out and pushing out, and pu it's like going to the gym every day and you know working the same muscles every day even after they've they're torn and damaged and all that and you're just gonna hit a wall guys and you're gonna freak yourself out and you're just gonna do more harm than it is good all right so when you get into this new level of consciousness it's like first of all when you start out all you're doing is learning about your computer and all the programs inside it and how it all works and then one day you know, you connect to the internet and then you start exploring all these known sites that you don't know about but are already there that everyone knows about. And then you start saying, oh, this is wonderful and that's fantastic and this workshop's amazing and that speaker's brilliant and this is all really good. And then all of a sudden you get to this level where it all it's all kind of the same. It's all kind of the same and <clears throat> you're getting the same information and, you know, maybe... You're, you're cycling through it because you know uh, you haven't grounded it all yet or you've grounded it all now and it's all sounding the same you're getting to that level where it's like you're not getting any more progression because you need to keep going and then all of a sudden someone introduces you to the dark net all right and just like you know in matter and dark matter the dark net you know, makes up a huge part of the internet. But before you go exploring that, <laughs> there are certain things you should have in place to keep yourself safe or to minimize risk as much as possible. And you should know how to defend yourself in those spaces because even though at the highest level, this is all still you, there are parts of you at an unconscious level that aren't very nice and aren't very good and you know no matter how much of a good person you want to pretend that you are and mask it from the external and people's opinions you have to come to terms with those dark parts of yourself you know that you are capable of all these horrible terrible things and you know if if you weren't then they wouldn't show up in reality you wouldn't even see them but you know they're on the news they're in the media you know shit like this happens all the time and we're all like why is this happening why is this happening it's because guys the subconscious mind that you're connected to that is part of you you know these areas that we don't even want to look at that we'd rather spend all our days ignoring through these you know wearing purple happy pants and hanging crystals around our necks and you know becoming a vegan and you know pretending that we're all clear on the inside and that we're all peaceful and loving beings you know i've some of the most passive aggressive horrible people i have ever met have been in the self-help new age um you know niches and they come across as being these benevolent lovely people until you challenge their beliefs and then they they just there's no there's no restraint they just turn into you know a, a smith inside the matrix and they just start trying to kill you right so <laughs> these these parts of ourselves as a collective we need to face them and we need to deal with them and and not necessarily in a force meets force way but we need to become aware of them and put our observation on them before we can do anything with it and guys it's just code in the system you know um, when these things hit you and they affect you or infect you uh, although they can be really hard to deal with um, they're going to level you up they're going to upskill you and upgrade you and once you master them then you know you're a master of them you master them so they don't affect you anymore and they become now a tool in your arsenal and so 
once you, you you get all these tools like doing martial arts you get more and more dangerous as you get deeper into your training and you get to this point where you're so dangerous you can do all this destructive stuff and you see yourself in the enemy you know and then the question is can you love the enemy like you love yourself because it is part of yourself and then this is where restraint comes in you know this is where can you not give in to that magnetic pull that temptation to just use these um these abilities on people and you know destroy and hurt them you know because sometimes the the abilities become so subtle and so indistinguishable that seemingly to people who don't have the skill level that you have you know, they would never know where it was coming from or that you were the instigator of this. And so, you know, do you have the restraint to not use the ability and to seek a higher path, a more loving, compassionate, uh, patient and tolerant path? You know, these are really tough questions. And, you know, once you get over the initial initiation, into the game you know once you someone shows you how to connect and they show you a few little tricks and you think you're all cool because you've you know you can move around the system a little bit um you know there's deeper layers to it and uh the deeper you go the more uh precision and the more skill you require